Apart from, of course, the music being, you know, our music being banned on radio and TV um, and us getting attacked often in, this, in state media, state controlled media will, uh, will be uh, either derogatory or publish, publish rumors or allegations that are completely unfounded. Um, we also at shows would often get members of the Central Intelligence Organization coming to monitor our shows, um, which would scare off, of course, which would scare off audience members. Um, and then also organizing events, especially in the townships, there's a lot of political barriers you have to go through. You have to get police clearance to hold just a, a concert um, and very stringent conditions attached. No politics, no political messaging, no mention of political parties. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of barriers one has to get through just to hold an event. Yeah. And oh, and, oh, politically, politically. Um, the, I mean, yeah, this, and, and the situation itself uh, in general for, you know, for, for artists is, is, is difficult in, in Zimbabwe. There is, uh, we've maybe got a bit more space since the uh, formation of the government of national unity, but not, not much. Uh, and so there's still this ongoing struggle for uh, freedom of expression, um, an ongoing struggle for artists to believe that they can express themselves, because still radio and TV... Uh, all radio and TV is controlled by the state. Um, no dissenting voices, no alternative voices are allowed. And state radio and TV are known uh, for playing uh, endless Zanu PF jingles. I mean, just, you know, adverts, sing, you know, adverts in song and music that are pro Mugabe, pro Zanu PF and derogatory towards anyone who is, has an alternative view, who is, who is seen as opposition. Um, so the situation it, it hasn't improved dramatically. We do have, finally, back on the streets since the Government of National Unity, we do have independent daily newspapers. Um, so there is a partial opening up of space, but still, uh, as an artist with an alternative view, you will not get onto radio uh, and TV as it stands. An artist is still afraid uh, to express themselves. They're afraid um, of, being, uh, of not being played on radio. They're afraid of being... Um, attacked um, either you know verbally or physically uh, for their for their views um, and so it's it was still in a very in a very difficult situation because apart from the obvious censorship there is a lot of artists will self-censor they'll say behind closed doors you know you'll have artists coming you know coming up to me and saying yeah you know believe in what you guys are doing and what others others are saying but you know we can't say it on stage but we kind of you know support what you're doing and so that is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's still, it's still an, an, an ongoing problem. There are, there are some great outspoken artists um, in, you know, in Zimbabwe. There, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's you know, Leonard Jakarta, Raymond Majongwe, Thomas Mapfumo, um, outspoken, Godobori, myself, um, and, and also a host of new spoken word and hip hop uh, artists that that we are working with through, you know, through, uh, through Magamba, through our organization, trying to encourage also a new generation of socially conscious and critical um, artists who are trying to use their voices for, for social change. So at least, you know, despite, despite the barriers that we, you know, that we encounter, what we do try and do is create spaces um, and build movements where Artists feel they can express themselves freely um, and be critical of, you know, of society and try and contribute their voices towards that. So I do think um, we are still within, within the confines of the country. We are still able to create those freedom spaces um, where you can see a new generation of critical artists growing up. What I wanted to develop was a new, a new form of, of spoken word, a new form of poetry um, that was street, that was speaking in slang, that was relevant to people, that mixed up English and Shona, um, but that was also that was urban, that was political, that could motivate and inspire people. Um, and so I started performing uh, quite a lot from 2004 onwards. 
Um, within two years, we'd created Zimbabwe's first poetry slam, which is a great space for freedom of expression. Um, and quite soon after that, I was touring, touring a lot solo, and then I built a band around that, where we tried to create a new form of music, which was hip hop and chimurenga and house and jit, um, a whole kind of mix of African and Western sounds that we grow up with. Um, and so with that music, um, we, uh, we re uh, recorded an album, House of Hunger, um, which did get rave reviews internationally, but was banned on radio and TV um, in Zimbabwe. This was, we released this in 2008, just before the, two weeks before the presidential elections. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, since, since then, the music, of course, is not played on radio and TV, but we, we've, we uh, play regular concerts in Zimbabwe. We tour a lot. The music, we've, we've toured with it around Africa, the Indian Ocean, Europe, the Caribbean, and the US. Um, and we get a very good, we get a really good reception uh, in Zimbabwe from those who listen to the music, from the youth on the streets to, you know, middle class youth in the suburbs, a very kind of mixed crowd. Um, and alongside that, we've also started an organization called Magamba, which is about using the spoken word and hip hop in the struggle for social justice. So we put on a lot of cultural events. Um, we run Zimbabwe's leading spoken word and hip hop event. We've launched an international spoken word and hip hop festival this year where we brought an act from eight different countries. Um, we run youth projects, outreach projects, social media projects. And the whole idea is expanding democratic space, pushing for freedom of expression and using spoken word and hip hop and urban culture as the vehicles for this.